Thanks Eunice. Three fuel cells. Let's start with the hydrogen fuel cell that takes hydrogen and oxygen. And like all fuel cells, it turns chemical energy into electrical energy. Notice how hydrogen molecules go in. The covalent bond is broken and those electrons from that covalent bond go round the external circuit, in this case lighting a little light bulb. The remaining hydrogen ions go through the PEM, proton exchange membrane, and react with oxygen and those electrons from the external circuit, making water molecules. So the product of this is just water. It doesn't get much more environmentally friendly than that for an energy generation source. So let's take a closer look at the half equations. At the anode, which is the negative electrode, where electrons are produced, hydrogen molecules make hydrogen ions and electrons. And at the cathode, oxygen, those hydrogen ions and electrons form water. So combining these two half equations to get the equation of the fuel cell, well, we can't just do that without balancing the electrons first. There's two electrons in the top equation, the oxidation, oxidation is loss of electrons equation, and four electrons in the reduction equation, reduction is gain. So if I double the top equation, so I can add those equations up now, cancelling out what appears on both sides to give me the equation for the fuel cell, oxygen, and hydrogen makes water. Well, how benign is that? So where are these super fuel cells? Well, part of the problem is the proton exchange membrane and the catalysts are also used. On the good side, they work at low temperatures, they're nimble, which means you can ramp production up and down easily and there are no toxic byproducts but they are really, really expensive. Their technology is super expensive. And so that is why these things aren't in regular use. Fuel cells with PEMs are so-called acid-based because protons are acidic. The second one you need to know is methanol as a fuel in a fuel cell. So methanol and water turns into carbon dioxide, six protons and six electrons. The electrons again go around the external circuit can do work. React with the protons and oxygen to make water. So again, two quite benign products of fuel cells, carbon dioxide and water. Again, looking at the half equations, the anode, which is the negative electrode, methanol and water makes carbon dioxide, protons and electrons. And at the cathode, the positive electrode, Oxygen, protons, and electrons make water. So let's cancel out what appears on both sides of these half equations to get the full equation for the fuel cell. Which rather delightfully is methanol and oxygen makes carbon dioxide and water. Now of course you could burn methanol to get the energy out, but this is a more elegant way. There's no flames, there's no fires, there's no stop, drop and roll, less screaming. And if you carbon offset, then even the carbon dioxide produced isn't going to be problematic. The third fuel cell is alkali based, so put some sodium hydroxide into this. And your two electrodes, well they are porous carbon, and they have platinum palladium catalysts on them. So hydrogen goes in, and again the negative electrode is where the electrons are produced. Hydrogen goes in and reacts with the hydroxide ions from your sodium hydroxide. That's going to produce a couple of water molecules and four electrons. And once again, those electrons go around the external circuit, in this case lighting up a light bulb which is a circle with a cross in it, in physics. Electrons produced at the negative electrode, the anode, in voltaic cells. It's the opposite for electrolytic cells. Thanks, physics.
So what happens to those water molecules? Well, depending on which book or website you look at, the water is drained off through either of those two holes. I don't think it's that important, to be honest. But water is needed at the cathode, where oxygen, the four electrons, and two water molecules combine, rather luckily, to make the hydroxide ions back again. Well, that's clever. And so hydroxide ions were used up at the anode, but regenerated at the cathode. Wish I thought of that. And again, the equation for this alkali cell is hydrogen and oxygen just makes water. 